I had known Glenn on two previous pilots, Glenn Gordon Karen, yes. We had been introduced on his first pilot and had done a terrific job of it. And for some reason, I understood. I just knew what he was doing. And he is, he is the Lorenzo Semple subclone. He, he's a little off, kind of zany, and I appreciated that. And maybe had learned it from Lorenzo. I don't know, but I understood Glenn's writing. So though we did that pilot and a second pilot unsuccessfully, I still liked the words and thought that the losers were the audience, not us. So when, when ABC said, "Look, you've done a couple shows your way," A, jur a, a columnist, and I'm blacking out. A columnist and somebody else were the main characters. A broken down detective. A broken down detective, Paul Lamat, and a columnist who had a column like. Uh, Is this New York. long time gone? Different? Yeah, yeah. That was that was Paul Lamat and on the Will detective. Wheaton and Dusenberry. Yes, yes. Barbara Stock, Ray Gerardi. Yes, yes. And that was a terrific show with him as a broken down detective, the whole show being seen through his young son's eyes. A 10 year old going, wow, look at that gun. You know, some guy's got a big rifle trained on you and the kid thinks it's all a, it was a wonderful idea and a run, wonderful show and no sale. So those two shows we had done together. So ABC said to him, Glenn, Look, you've done it your way now. You've done a broken down detective and a columnist. Now do it our way. Give us a detective. And he said, okay. And I guess shrugged and, and cranked out uh, Moonlighting. And it was, it was terrific. What about the casting on Moonlighting? Was Sybil Shepherd always there? And it became uh, less I think she was. Movie, she she, the male she had done a kind of a nighttime soap opera, multiple character soap opera, not unlike Dallas, but serious. I can't remember, Yellow Ribbon or Yellow Rose or something. Yeah. Yellow Rose it must have been. And the show didn't score, but she was nice in it. And it brought her back to consciousness again. So she was kind of available and kind of cool at that moment. So the thought was, hey, wouldn't she be terrific, ex-model, as this lady who is a model? Let's do that. So she was on board first. Uh, then we began to search for the guy. And we searched and searched and, you know, met and read, I mean, a mile of men. And we met Bruce in New York, whom I forgot. I don't even remember him from New York. We met him in New York, and then we were back in Los Angeles hunting for actors. And um, he happened to be out here on somebody else's nickel. He was out on some other interview. So somebody said, maybe Reuben Cannon, our casting guy, why don't we take another look at Bruce? And he walked in, he was on somebody else's expenses. He had, we had turned him down once. He walked in and took over. It was down in, a, down in Pico at a production office we had down there. The guy took over. He owned the walls, the carpet, the conference table. He just soared through the part, not unlike Bruce Weitz had done in his appropriate style. And he was terrific, and we liked him immensely. Uh, I liked him fairly well. A uh, little disdain, again, being great. And so we went with him to ABC, and they loved him, except for the boss. And good, good bossing, the guy said, look, everybody in this room loves this guy, and I don't like him. So what we have to do, since I'm the boss, is prove me wrong. That's what we have to do. And here's the way we do that, he said. We gotta shoot a test. It doesn't matter, do it against the psych, it doesn't matter. Let's shoot a couple scenes with this guy, and let's test him and see how he scores. Well, we didn't shoot any scene against any psych, I'll tell you. We got a lovely little set, and there wasn't time I did the iris out like the old, I'd never done it before because there wasn't time to go to a lab with fade outs. So I said, let's, let's do an iris out, figuring it, it would get down to a point of light and then there wouldn't be anything more. Well, I gotta tell you guys, it works. The iris out fades you to black, dead black, it was great. I mean, we were really hurried. 
We built a nice little set, lit it sexy, and did three little scenes. We didn't do a scene against a psych. We did three little scenes. And they really flattered Bruce. And Sybil was with him. And uh, I think I had her wear flats or him wear cowboy boots or something to get the height a little better because she's a monstrous, very tall lady. And Bruce is a normal normal tall guy, and I thought, it would, I thought it would flatter both of them. I thought it would feminize her and flatter him if we got that height differential going. In any case, they did the, they did the test, and the people loved him, and he got cast, and that's the Bruce Willis story. And he was good. He was excellent, excellent. And, you know, you talk about, you talk about character growth, <coughs> growth and arc. <coughs> With both those guys, Pierce Brosnan, in that part, and Bruce Willis and that. There's no growth, there's no arc. Those guys walk in on page one, owning the world, and they own it for 50 pages, and then we fade. That's it, folks, that's the way the character works.